Picture this. You just started a new job and you're grabbing a drink after work to get to know your new coworkers. Pretty quickly, the conversation turns to movies. Great, you think. I love movies. But after just a few minutes, they start throwing out all kinds of names, titles, and film industry words you've never heard before. Things like John Cassavetes, neorealism, production design, Frank Capra, Greta Gerwig. You'd be much more comfortable talking about the latest Marvel movie or debating the ins and outs of Mean Girls for the hundredth time. You suddenly remember that time your friend from college made you watch the old black and white Night of the Living Dead. And you kind of liked it, but you also felt pretty sure that you hadn't really understood it. The truth is, you've always thought it would be cool to branch out and know more about movies, but you've also felt intimidated and had no idea where to start. If you identify with any part of that story, you've come to the right place. Hello and welcome to Art House Garage, episode one. We are thrilled to have you listening. My name is Andrew and this is Drew. Hey! My name's Drew. We are very excited. Uh, we've been wanting to do this podcast for a while, so yeah. let's do it. I think the first thing to answer is what is Art House Garage? Uh, it's a podcast about movies and we're going to get into more of what it's about. But basically, we both love movies, mm-hmm. but we sense a problem. What's the problem, Drew? The problem is snobbery. Man, I That's cannot right. stand being talked down to when we're talking about movies. <laughs> it's true. So I feel like movies, more than any other art form, should be very open and open to anyone and open for discussion. Yeah, um, I think, yeah, I, I think that's, yeah. that's very true. It's, uh, I don't know, it's, it should be the art form of the people. But I, I love movies and I love watching, you know, really good movies and talking about them. Mm-hmm. But I can get five seconds into a conversation with someone right. and realize that they're talking down to me or they are rolling their eyes because I've never seen X, Y, and Z. And oh. I just think that's so annoying. What's um, one, what's one movie... Uh, that you remember where you told someone you'd never seen it and they were like disgusted. Do you remember? Yeah. Um, I think I, that's happened to me a lot of times. Um, it happened to, you said that to me earlier tonight. What did you say? Yeah. About? <laughs> oh, was it seven? Was it, uh, the I've movie never seven? seen seven. Yeah. Yeah. With, uh, Brad Pitt more. Yeah. Sure. You're like, I've never seen, I'm like, why would you have not seen that movie yet? <laughs> so, know, right. well, here's the thing. I just said to my shame. But here's the thing. I don't think I should be ashamed and I don't think anyone oh, should. Yeah. Uh, and I think and that's exactly, so I experienced this too with my wife. So my wife did not grow up watching movies at all. Mm-hmm. I grew up watching a lot of movies with my family. Yeah. And so at family gatherings and things early on, it was always, Allison, I can't believe you've never seen whatever. <laughs> and she got so annoyed with that pretty oh, quickly. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, I I really want to create a space where people can talk openly and if we're mm-hmm. still learning, guess what? Everyone is still learning. Yeah. Um, so I, I just hate that that kind of snobbiness. And I'll say too, I think the reason I'm so sensitive to that is I used to totally be that way about yes. music, about movies, and um, mm-hmm. over. I mean, actually meeting my wife, but before that too, uh, I started calling that out on other people and then seeing that in myself. And mm-hmm. anyway, uh, so I'm also not saying that I'm perfect in that, but I, I strive to be better. And I think that the whole film criticism and film industry discussion industry can be better at that. Yeah. So and it's, a, it's like so super strange. intimidating too. Like if someone wants to get into watching film, they're afraid yeah. they can like, people can be afraid to ask to mm-hmm. understand because they're afraid like people are going to judge them yeah. for it. I'm like, come on. Think about this. Learn. Yeah. So, so it's like, okay, I want to get into movies and learn more. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's a little encouragement movies haven't been around that long. So if you wanted to get into classical music or something, think how <laughs> much go back there. hundreds of years. Yeah, there's like, yeah, so much more. So anyway, yes, there's lots of movies. They're a time commitment to watch a lot of things. So I, mm-hmm. uh, here's another thing that, uh, so my wife likes movies, not as much as I do, which is great. And uh, there's the same thing, the other mm-hmm. direction too. Yeah. But I, if, I think if she never watched another movie in her life, she'd be okay with it. Like she'd be oh, like, wow. she probably wouldn't care that much. <laughs> that yeah. may not be true. I shouldn't speak for her, but uh, on the flip side, I pretty frequently feel anxiety about the fact that I'll never be able to watch all the movies I want to watch before I die. Really? <laughs> like, it's not going to happen. And I'm like, dang, 
<laughs> I'll have to watch that. Probably won't happen. So, oh, man, that's this funny. This is an effort to make me watch more too. Yeah. Because, yeah, I think, yeah, just making that habit and, and having an outlet for it. it's a safe place for people to come. It's just, I mean, I don't know everything about movies either, you know, and like, that's why I love um, Art House Garage and I love talking with you about movies, Andrew, because I love learning as well, mm-hmm. you know, and so I love that Art House Garage exists to yeah. help bridge the gap between people who want to know about movies to the movies themselves, you know? Exactly. Yeah. What are some other, what are some other things, Andrew, since this is your, you know, brainchild, what are some other things that you want to see out art house garage do for people? Yeah. So there's definitely the educational part and me and you are both former educators. So I think that works well. Um, But I think to just a community. Um, So I think in general, connecting with art makes us more human or uh, more uh, spiritually well, I don't know, emotionally well. Um, All of it. I think that is true. Uh, There's, so I recently watched a movie called Before Sunrise, directed by Richard Linklater. Mm -hmm. Uh, We are going to talk about that on the podcast pretty soon. Um, But there, it's about a romantic relationship, but it's mostly about this connection. And at one point, the the female in the relationship says she's talking about kind of humanity and um she basically says the only great thing is this space in between us and like this idea of us trying to connect you know i believe if there's any kind of god it wouldn't be in any of us not you or me but just this little space in between If there's any kind of magic in this world, it must be in the attempt of understanding someone, sharing something. Yeah. Uh, and I, yeah. I think that, I thought that was really cool. I was really yeah. moved by that. And I just think that's, um, yeah, it speaks to the importance of connection and community. Mm-hmm. If you think about most religious traditions, agree that community is an important thing. Yeah. I just think it's good for us as people um, to have a community. And if you're someone who loves movies or wants to learn more, uh, I want to make a space for that. How do you see, like, how do you see film analysis, film critique, like discussing film? How do you see that playing a role in creating community? I'm very curious. Yeah. So that's another, that's a good question. And I think um, when we watch a movie, we can all have different responses uh, and we should, and that's great. Mm -hmm. And I think what's really exciting too, is when you have the same response as someone or when you see something in a movie. uh, So for instance, watching a movie from another culture and you see what's different about that other culture, but you also realize what's the same and you realize, wow, that like, it just makes you feel more connected to humanity, I think. And the same thing for watching old movies. So Mm -hmm. like, I have no idea what it was like to be alive in 1936, but if I watch a movie from that time and I see people laughed at the same kind of things. And uh, I don't know, I've always been really excited by that feeling when I'm watching an old black and white movie or something. So snob free community that's what we're trying to be yeah i love it so my question um is like what what can we all expect like what can our listeners expect from art house garage Yes. So we are going to do this podcast weekly, possibly more frequently. I like what a lot of podcasts do where they have a main show and they might have one-off mini shows. I'm going to do that too, I think, mm-hmm. uh, as time allows. Uh, so we will talk about specific movies. Like we'll have an episode about this title. Um, and I want those to be, there's a lot of research that shows the sweet spot of a podcast length is like a commute. So 20, 30 minutes, mm-hmm. um, maybe somewhat longer. I think if it gets a lot longer, we can split it into two episodes. I don't want to make that um, easy to digest. So part of the snob free and the easy to access, I think comes with that shorter time. I enjoy digging into like a two hour podcast about a movie I love, but I know that not everyone does. And I think that's, uh, and also if you look at the movie podcast space, most of them are really long. So I think we can fill a need there hopefully to, um, Hey, I just watched this movie in the theater and I want to search and see here's 20 minutes about it. Um, and that's easier to handle. I think I love the idea of like doing the research, right? Watching analysis videos, digging deep, yeah. reading articles on the symbolism in movies and then being able to bring mm-hmm. that and 
break that down into a way where like normal everyday people can understand it. Cause like sometimes you read like articles about ana- like analysis of movies and you're just like, what did I just read? Right. Yeah. Um, and I love the idea of bringing, like you had told me the other day, Andrew, that you wanted to like bring on directors and uh, <laughs> cinematographers and like uh, just different people that are in the film industry to come on and just ask them questions about what they do and about what they're looking for. And um, so that, cause here's the thing that I love. And this is what for me, I think a lot of people may be able to get from our house garage is like the more you understand or the more that I understand about film, the more I actually enjoy it. And, and that's really cool to me, you know? Yeah, I totally agree. And so one thing I want to do is uh, probably this would not be the podcast, but some other platform have like some sort of, what do I need to know before I watch this? Because that I think really can enrich your experience watching. Yeah. If you know, like a two minute read on a blog post yeah. of who directed this, what are they known for? Yeah. What's an important thing, especially if it's an older movie, uh, what's one thing to watch for here? Mm-hmm. Uh, that takes it from, I enjoyed that too. I really connected with that. And yeah. I think that's a, that can be helpful and fun work for me to do. Like I would love to research a ton about this movie and then boil that down into a few minute read for people. Um, yeah. So that's kind of part of that idea, but yes, interviews as well. I uh, have just recently met a few like local filmmakers um, and it's so hopefully I can grab uh, like a cinematographer what is your day job actually like like what is it mm-hmm. like on set what are you doing you know like a cinematographer is about how the movie looks but i thought that was the director's job like what's that relationship like yeah. i think there's a lot of um things that i just want to know and i could probably find out by googling it but mm-hmm. i'd rather ask somebody and have a cool conversation about it yeah absolutely so i'm, I'm really really curious um you know a lot of people see podcasts about film and stuff and they're all reviews so like what's the difference mm-hmm. in like film reviews and what you want art house garage to be. Yes. I love that question. So I think, um, you would almost think we planned that question. Uh, <laughs> it's definitely but I, but really I do think that's an important thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a friend the other day talking to me kind of about this and she was like, I really like movies, but I don't feel like I'm a good critic. Um, I think I'm going to have this friend on the show and do an episode about this, like a little more in depth, but she's like, I, I watch something and I pretty much like what's in front of me with some exceptions, not like everything's great, but Mm -hmm. I don't look for the negative things. I'm like, Hey, that's a good thing. You see the positives. I think that could only be a good thing. Um, yes, there are movies that are not great. Um, but I think there's good and bad in every movie. And instead of a, a review of every single thing we watch, First of all, every other podcast is doing that, mm-hmm. um, and that's great. I don't think I'm a great critic either. I'm much better at studying something and explaining it, uh, and I think that's a good point to start a discussion. Um, yeah. So this will be discussions, not necessarily, did we like this or not? Five stars, four stars. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to be just, here's here's some cool stuff to know about this, and mm-hmm. I think Why? that's more authentic and real too. Yeah, exactly. No, no, no. I was going to yeah. say, I was just going to add to that and say, instead of saying, this pass or fail, it's good or bad, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, here's some different things that went into making this film. And here's why this film is really important for our culture. Mm -hmm. And this is the symbolism Mm -hmm. in it and why, you know, what does that mean for our society? Because I think um, there's so much film out there and I love film as an art form because for me personally, um, it just, I love visual storytelling. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what Mm -hmm. film is. It's visual storytelling. Um, and it, it includes all the different um, senses, you know, sight, sound. Mm-hmm. Well, it doesn't include all of them, I guess, not like touch or smell. But um, And I think... In Disney World, they have that kind of thing. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. But um, I think what's really beautiful about it is that it you can convey so much meaning. And that's what I love digging into is like, what is without looking at what if this movie was good or bad, which is what a lot of people are wrapped up in, what does this movie mean? What does it mean Mm -hmm. for us as, as human beings, as Americans, as, you know, whatever our ethnicity is, what does it mean for us specifically in that people group, you know? And so I think that's really, really cool. And I love the idea of being able to discuss that. Hey, I wanted to jump out and give a quick word from our sponsor, Appalling Productions. Appalling Productions, 
produces lots of things, uh, photography, videography, music production, uh, they really do a lot. One thing that they do and do very well, I can say from first-hand experience, is that they will compose and create music for your film, TV show, or podcast, or anything else that you might need some custom-made music for. They, in fact, did the theme song to this very podcast. So if you liked it, you can go to appallingproductions.com. That's A-P-A-U-L-I-N-G. It's founded by a guy named Paul, so it's appalling. Appallingproductions.com slash contact. And if you mention Art House Garage in your message, they will give you a discount. And that's a good, good place to jump in uh, and say, let's get to know Drew a little bit. Uh, so you told us why you love movies, anything else to add to that? And then you can just tell us about yourself. Oh man. Um, why do I love, yeah, that's a lot of it. I kind of did go into that already, but yeah, visual storytelling is really, really, really big to me. Mm -hmm. Um, I really connect with it. I connect with art and beauty. So I love a lot of different forms of art, but film specifically, I just, I love the way the visuals and the audit, the auditory mixes together and just can affect my emotions and can help me connect to characters that aren't even real and help me feel for them, which essentially makes me feel alive, you know, touch to another human being, whether they were real or not. You know, Um, I just love that power that it has to be able to, to, to reach into us and to, to tap into that. It's really cool. Yeah. Very fascinating. I love that. Uh, I would say, you know, I'll give you my top four real quick. So my top four uh, on Letterbox. if you guys know what Letterbox is, um, you should go check it out. It's an app where you can give film reviews and, and rate, rate films. And yeah. my top four is The Last Samurai, mm-hmm. King's Speech, No Country for Old Men, and Seven. And I'll tell you, we wouldn't have, I don't think we'll have time to go over every single one of them, but The Last Samurai, I love that one so much because I love the idea Tom Cruise's main character, how he's so broken at the beginning of the film and he goes over to Japan and he gets captured and you would think it's a white savior film it has that white savior complex, but it's actually the exact opposite. I feel like the Japanese village, and a lot of the samurai, they save Tom Cruise's character from self-destruction and there's so much beauty in that redemption. And there's just so many things to that, that piece of film that I just, could talk about for hours i love it so yeah. much the performance i've only everything. seen that once i really oh, want to watch that again man it's so so group. good yeah yes it's so, so like good. when it came out and i was really young i barely remember much about it. i just remember him yelling sake <laughs> yeah me and my me and my i have a best friend and whenever we mention that movie we'll just immediately start yelling sake <laughs> just like no warning <laughs> that's really funny <laughs> okay what was your uh, second movie okay the king's speech mm, so good Yeah, King's Speech. Um, I just love that film for, again, you'll see uh, in those two movies, I like them for a pretty similar transformation of the main character from Mm -hmm. you see um, King George. Just just the family dynamics of even in his real family and just how his shame, personal shame from his family and just transformation through Mm -hmm. a brother like Lionel is the speech path. So one of the professional things you do is coach, and I think that goes really well with the King's speech. That's kind yes. of interesting. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Anyway, uh, that's, I, I connect to Lionel a lot. He's, yeah. he's somebody I really look to for compassion. If I'm feeling, you know, down or something, I, I'll put in the King's speech and it always lifts me up. The third one would be no yeah. country for old men. I could talk hours about the symbolism in that movie. That just blows my mind. I love the Coen brothers. I love Coen brother mm-hmm. film and I love no country for old men because I love how they, prime you as a as an audience as a movie watcher they prime you to feel like you're about to watch a classic western a modern day mm. western but kind of the classic right and there's certain things i need to go into western like the shootout and the and these have clear roles between the bad guy and the good guy and there's certain characteristics that each of them need to have and there needs to be you know a finale and all these things yeah. And they prime you at the beginning of this movie to, to feel like that's what you're about to, to consume, to, to watch. But they flip all of those tropes on their heads. It's such intellectually like challenging film content. 
Mm. Um, That's another one I've seen once, but I really need to see again. These are good just titles to go through over their first episodes too. Oh make man, I'd love to. Boom, here yeah, we go. They're so good. <laughs> and what was your what was your last movie? And then number four would be Seven, um, mm-hmm. which I just think is a classic film from the 90s um -hmm. it's got brad pitt morgan freeman and um who directed that that david uh fincher is one of his first yeah he also did yeah david fincher social network gone girl some of his more recent ones yeah so Uh, what i love about that movie is i love how it's it's a very very dark movie like Mm -hmm. most of the shot like 70 percent of the movie it's raining you know it's like such a dark and morbid movie there's a lot of really just crimes that are being committed, but they're just like repulsive and just mm. very gritty. But what's so oh, it's about the seven deadly sins. Yeah, yeah it is. That's why it's called. Okay. Seven. And yes. there's a, a crime. Someone's murdered and it's connected in some way metaphorically to one of the seven deadly sins. But what's so, what's so amazing about the movie to me is that it actually has an optimistic worldview, even though mm. it's so dark and it's so mm. gritty. And some really terrible things happen. Okay, next question. Unless you were about to say something else. No, no, no. Go, go, go. What's the last movie that you watched? And one takeaway from it. Uh, the last movie I watched was Operation Finale. Oscar mm-hmm. Isaac and Ben Kingsley. Amazing, amazing movie. Amazing filmmaking. Amazing performances from the actors and actresses. One takeaway from the movie. I love when filmmakers use blocking and when they use like aesthetics and they use a physical blocking, which is like where your actors are standing, how they're positioned, mm-hmm. things that they're doing to tell the, the story. Mm. You think a lot about blocking with theater. I think that is cool to bring that into yes. more prominently into a movie. That's cool. Mm-hmm. That sounds awesome. And Oscar Isaac is such a good actor. Yes. Incredible. Yeah. And so has Ben Kingsley, dude. Just phenomenal. Oh, yeah. For sure. Uh, last question for you. What do you look for in a movie? Is there any like theme or something that you watch for frequently? Man, what do I look for in a movie? I love to see holistic storytelling uh, from just overall in a film, like where the filmmakers pay enough d- attention to detail where they're not just, it's not just the dialogue and it's not just the overall plot of things that are happening, but it's the little details like in operation finale, how it's the little details of, of their posture, of their blocking of the clothes that they're the colors in the scene um, that tell the story just as much as what the actors are actually doing and saying, but what you visually see is telling the story as well. I am so impressed by film films and filmmakers who do that. Um, mm-hmm. Some like some filmmakers I think do that really well is like Quentin Tarantino mm-hmm. and Wes Anderson. I think they do that very very well. They use a lot of the nonverbals and the visuals and the and the in the auditory all those things together to tell the story. I think it's it makes really good films stand out. I love that answer, and I, that kind of segues into the next thing, which is me telling why I love movies. Yeah, go. And I think that absolutely that what you just said like bringing in all the little details Mm -hmm. you can be meticulous like what you said so like i really enjoy music and thinking about what's good music i really enjoy visual art and movies kind of bring that all together and i think that's really cool that and it can take you on a journey too um so like seeing it in the theater i think is incredible and you kind of have to subject yourself to it and really be on board for whatever it's doing and i think that's the best you know just going on a journey with a movie is an amazing way to spend your time. And um, mm-hmm. yeah, anyway, that's the short answer, I guess. But yeah, uh, just always, I think ever since I was a kid, really connected with just movie, watching movies. Yeah. What do you, what would you say then? What would you say is your top four movies? My top four on Letterboxd. Number one I have, and this is what I always answer when people say, what's your favorite movie? Um, first of all, that answer changes from day to day, but <laughs> like a really good, like best movie of all time, or one of my favorite movies ever mm-hmm. is eternal sunshine of the spotless mind. You know, that's, that that's a movie I've never, I haven't seen. I think, uh, I've been telling you I'm going to see it, but I haven't actually made time to watch it yet. I love it. So briefly what it is, is it's a romantic movie. Um, and it's actually at the beginning of the movie, they've just broken up. So I realized a while back that I really enjoy, like I looked at a lot of my favorite movies and I really enjoy movies that 
uh, are more or less grounded in reality, but they have one really fantastical element to it. Mm -hmm. There's probably a word for that, like magical realism or something, but like Groundhog Day. I love that movie. Really? And it, you know, it has this weird time travel thing. But other than that, it's just like an everyday situation, you know? Mm -hmm. So that kind of thing. So Eternal Sunshine feels very much like it's in reality, mm -hmm. but they there's this company that you pay to erase, selectively erase your memory. And so basically these people have broken up and they erase each other from their memories. And then it's what happens when they meet again. Whoa, that's and crazy. It's, it's, it's awesome. really great. Uh, yeah, I absolutely love it. Um, it's a kind of a mind bender. Um, Jim Carrey in a really serious role, which I love. Yeah, it's just really good. So that. is it a, is it a, at the end of the movie, are you happy or do you feel sad? Um, mixed, I would say, but mostly it's a positive movie. I'd say it's a positive outlook. That's cool. I was, I was um, thinking we should get together and we'll watch Seven first, which will, you know, um, very dark and then we'll <laughs> take us down. Yeah. And then we'll watch Eternal Sunshine next. <laughs> yeah. So it's a very happy sounding title, right? Eternal Sunshine. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it's really good. Kate Winslet is the female lead and uh, a lot of good actors in it. Yeah. Next movie uh, is Inglorious Bastards, the Quentin Tarantino movie. Um, so actually, I realized I have two World War II movies mm -hmm. in my top four. My next one is two. But Inglorious <laughs> Bastards, I really love. I have kind of discovered Tarantino in college, which I think is a lot of people like who are into movies. Like, I watched Pulp Fiction and everything changed. Um, <laughs> yeah. But then when Inglorious Bastards came out, it, like suddenly I was like, wow, this he like he made a real movie. <laughs> that sounds like a weird thing to say, yeah. but it was just like people sitting around having dialogue. But it also played with a form. So I remember like the way it has cultures. Mm -hmm. um, it plays with the ideas around culture and language, uh, and that becomes part of the plot. Uh, it's also just a lot of fun, even though it is. I don't know. It's a little bit more subdued, at least in the first. I mean, it's really, it's full of action and stuff, but it's not big and crazy the way Pulp Fiction or Kill Bill is. And so I, I connected with that and, um, you know, like it has a really over the top British guy or a few, um, with like the Mike Myers character is really funny, but it, when then, you like, watch it, and, yeah, when you yeah. watch it, you don't expect Mike Myers to be in it. Yeah. He's like barely in it too, but he's really funny. He's mm -hmm. just like, the most British person you've ever met. <laughs> and, just find that scene. and then, uh, yeah, just like there's some espionage and like a spy pretending to be different cultures and mm -hmm. how that plays into his situation is really interesting. Of course, the ending is crazy. It ends up being about the power of film too, which obviously is something I enjoy. Yeah. Uh, I didn't even think about that. Even. I watched it two or you three times. About I never thought about that. How that ending happens in the movie theater yeah. and, uh, it had like the film itself, the film reel itself is a big part of it. Mm -hmm. If you recall, anyway, I don't want to spoil anything, but yeah, really big fan of that movie. Uh, next up is another world war two movie. Life is beautiful, which maybe similar to eternal sunshine, uh, has some difficult things in it, but ultimately life is beautiful. is kind of the message of it. So it's a, an Italian movie. It's, um, about, basically a guy who has an amazingly beautiful outlook on life. And this guy in reality really does. He directed it and started it, won the Oscar for a foreign language film that year. You may have seen actually, there's a great clip of him going to the Oscar stage and he got walks over to all these seats and he's like so happy and it's just so much joy. Like he radiates joy. And I think that's the only reason this movie works. That's awesome. Um, I've watched some behind the scenes stuff. People found out he was, he makes comedies. Someone found out he was making a comedy about the Holocaust. What? And they're like, well, you can't do that. What in the world? Basically, it's a comedy until the Holocaust starts and you see how that disrupts everything. Mm, wow. yeah. It's just beautiful. And like the first half of the movie, you're crying with happiness. And then the second half, you're like going through a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's a very good movie. All time favorites. Wow. Uh, and then my fourth one that I have on Letterboxd, honestly, I might change this. I really like this movie. I came to this movie when I, at a time that it really connected with me. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Donnie Darko. Why would you, yeah. why do you keep that on your top four instead of changing it? I thought it was cool. It has this 80s vibe, which is cool, but it is very dark. Like it's even in the name. Um, but, and it has, I don't know, a lot of angst and teenage angst. I watched it in college and uh, I don't know, kind of connected with like this disillusionment with the establishment and in kind of a grandiose kind of a way. Mm -hmm. um, he's kind of fed up with adults and 
life and it's kind of him dealing with that um and it has this crazy time travel stuff and it has this cool kind of cult following and there's this bunny scary bunny Mm -hmm. and like uh, i just it's wild and crazy and kept me guessing but also connected with it and just thought it was a fun a fun thing and that's one i have seen several times what is the last movie you watched and what was the takeaway from it yes just today i went and saw the movie searching which i'm definitely going to do an episode about this uh in the future so i'll go into more detail later but the whole thing takes place on computer screens and phone screens Mm -hmm. so it's like it's like you're sitting in front of a laptop or like the whole screen so first of all that's really crazy especially on a big screen like i saw it in the theater today and it's like your mac desktop is huge and so there's facetime calls and like the story unfolds that way but um it's a thriller about this guy looking for his daughter who's missing um and it's just amazingly effective and how well the story is told very emotional experience for me mm. um i've realized this over the last several movies now that i am a dad like father yeah. movies father daughter especially father daughter stuff me. <laughs> really gets me oh, uh, like we watched the wrinkle in time recently remember that? oh yeah yeah we watched that i didn't did fully love that movie but there's some father daughter stuff that really man hit me hard but Oof. this one too it's also about father in crisis which you know like my daughter's fine at this point but she's had some crises early on and so like i just identify with like his feelings of helplessness and anxiety wow. and like for that reason it really kind of wrecked me like i really really loved the movie and had quite an experience watching it I love how I love how someone who's never met you in this life and never will can create something that connects with you so intimately. Mm, yeah. You know? mm. Isn't that crazy? It's so true. It is crazy. Okay, so last question. Awesome. What do you look for in movies? I like a movie that keeps me guessing. I, maybe I'm just saying that because I watched a movie today that very effectively did that. Like, I had no idea. It's lots of twists and turns in this movie searching. Um, but yeah, a movie that is a little confusing uh, so i think that's something too like so people who are intimidated by you know weird artsy movies or, or something like that like um i like watching a movie that i know i don't know much about like i don't know what to expect or um why is this movie moving so slowly or what like why is this confusing thing happening yeah. and trying to find the answers even when the movie doesn't tell you the answer yeah. like i love trying to figure that out mm-hmm. um so, yeah, I guess that that's my answer is a movie that engages me intellectually or even just confuses me. I love it. I mean, in a, not in a bad way. There are movies that are confusing in a bad way. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, movies that kind of draw me in. Yeah. In my, in so, my so the last question of the day is if somebody – so for our listeners, Andrew, tell us how, like, they can follow us, how they can stay up to date, how they can get connected with us. Yes. Good question. So, uh, you can follow both of us individually on letterboxd. Uh, what's your letterboxd? Drew? Mine is drew foot nine one. So D R E W F O O T E nine one. There you go. Mine is a sweat. Oh eight A S W E A T zero eight. Um, and so those will keep individual, but then for art house garage, we have a Facebook page. Yeah. We have a Twitter. Mm-hmm. We have, uh, Instagram and all of those are just at art house garage. I'm also on stardust which is a fairly new platform, but it's, it's essentially, if you're not familiar with it, it's like a, an Instagram story attached to a movie title or an episode of a show. Oh, so nice. you record like a short thing that's like, so you can say, Oh, I watch eternal sunshine. And what are all these reactions to it? And you can follow people. So anyway, I'll be on there too. Yeah. So those are all the places, uh, follow us there. And I am excited to engage with people there. Yeah. yeah. And so I would just encourage everyone listening, go on to all of our pages, follow us. And I'd love to know what are your top four movies and why do you love them? I think that'd be cool. Great question. Yeah. Love it. Well, thank you everyone so much for joining us. I'm so excited. Um, Like I knew I wanted to get this episode one out so then we can start digging into movies and stuff. So keep uh, tuned to your local podcast app and you will be hearing from us again very soon. And that is all for episode one of Art House Garage. Thank you so much for listening. Reach out to us on social media. We are at Art House Garage on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. If you're listening with Anchor, you can leave us a voice message. And you can always reach out to us by email at andrew at arthousegarage.com. Thanks so much for listening. Bye.